cost, I don't know, hundreds of thousands to really make a serialization. I was winging every single episode. You could think something is the best idea in the world and they could take a big old steamy poop on it. Hello and welcome to Manga Education Podcast, where I answer your questions about the manga, webtoon, and anime industry. I'm your host, I'm Brandon Chen. I run a manga and webtoon studio, serializing with a lot of the large publishers like Webtoon, Voice Made Tapas, those kinds of publishers, here to answer your questions. How do you start a story? I have a bunch of ideas in my head. Can't find the strength to put them on paper. Is there any trick you use to commit to a story idea? Usually I start off with a log line. A log line is pretty much just one to two sentences and it condenses the entire idea into those one to two sentences. If you Google log line, I can look up some right now for us. So if I type in TV log lines examples, we can just run into some ideas. Let's look at Forrest Gump. Several historical events from the 20th century unfold from the perspective of an Alabama man with an IQ of 75, whose only real desire is to reunite with his childhood sweetheart. That pretty much just condenses all of Forrest Gump into one sentence. Titanic. A 17 year old aristocrat falls in love with the kind but poor artist aboard the luxurious ill-fated RMS Titanic. It's really simple. All you gotta do is just condense that concept into one to two sentences. Sentences, you start with that and then you branch out and you start to create your summary. After that, you keep expanding the story, doing characters, how you envision the overall story to look like. But starting off with a log line is really key. I think if you go backwards and you're trying to create a big story and you can't condense into a log line, that's where a lot of publishers and distributors and also studios such as I will see red flags. What is a good amount of panels for a webtoon? It really depends on the type of webtoon you're doing. If you're doing a four coma manga, for example, that's four panels. Some short ones are five to 10 panels. Some longer ones are 50 to 60. I'd say a lot of the narrative ones, if you want to do it on a weekly basis, 50 to 60 is the nice balancing point for how many panels you want to aim for for a webtoon. I have no other experiences besides basic manual retail labor. How would, could I begin to start becoming a manga author or artist? So the first thing is really just getting started. If you want to be an author, start off by creating a story. If you want to be an artist, you should be drawing every single day after your work. For me, I was in finance, but even then I was already a published author. So I've been published for novels since I was 17 years old. And so I started writing my novels back when I was 14, I think, going into 17. Just like really working at your dream in your free time is, is super important. You can't just say like, I want to be an author and artist and then not make any progress towards it. No one's really holding you back from creating your first project other than yourself. Unfortunately, there's no real manga or webtoon like school or academy. I have some resources on my Patreon. I also do coaching for this kind of stuff. If you want to do it fully on your own, just start writing and learning the hard way like I did, which is just like trial and error, creating your own projects, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't and iterating. Is it possible to make money for manga and webtoons with self-publishing. Say for manga, it's especially hard to monetize because there's no standardized platform that allows for strong monetization in the West. You could post your manga on Amazon and you could sell it. It's pretty hard to compete against Demon Slayer and those kinds of projects. On the flip side, if you're posting on Webtoon Canvas, it's also kind of hard because you can't really monetize off of that. Only way right now is really just creating your own digital product, marketing on social media, trying to get people from social media to purchase your project and then try and break even and maybe make a profit. Right now, the self-publishing space is not amazing for graphic novels and for manga. It's possible, but it just costs a lot to really make a manga or webtoon project. It costs, I don't know, hundreds of thousands to really make a serialization. Do you really want to front that cost? It's kind of hard. And I'm saying hundreds of thousands for like the highest tier of project. There's possibilities to make projects for a lot less. I promise. Hi, Brandon. I love what you did on Just a Goblin. When should we expect a season two? Can't wait. Season two comes out in March. So that's next month, actually. Holy crap. Hey, Brandon. I was curious. What is your routine for creating webtoons? Do you have the story right now and ready to go beforehand or do you make it up as you go? Usually we create a season beat sheet. Beat sheet is basically, hey, this is what's going to happen every single episode for the rest of the season. I tend to deviate from it. Just a Goblin. The end of season one was pretty much winged. I was winged every single episode. I had an idea of where I wanted to go, but in terms of how every single episode was being executed, the events that were happening, the dialogue that was happening, the character interactions, that was all stuff that I was doing on a week to week basis because I was just having different ideas from my original plan. I was seeing what the readers were liking, what they weren't liking. I was personally also just naturally interested in driving the series in a different direction than when I'd originally written it. So I put all those considerations together and I was creating a different direction for the story. Some authors don't like to do that. Some authors like to just create the one vision and stick to it the entire way. That's totally fine. Uh, for me, I like to kind of keep things a little bit dynamic. I'll write a beat sheet at the start, but I always know that as I'm publishing and as I'm putting things out, my mind will change and I'll just like completely deviate, which is maybe a little bit chaotic, but it's just kind of how I am as a writer. Would a story like Succession be successful in the manga industry? Does the Japanese readers in general like pure drama series? I think pure drama series can work. I think it wouldn't be written like Succession. It would have to be a little bit extra dramatized. If you were to do like Game of Thrones or even those types of stories and 
in manga format, they would just be juiced up in terms of drama. Like the interactions would be crazier. There are some stories that are pretty slow. The most recent one that was slow, but felt very strong was Free Rent, kind of like a drama type series that has some action in it. So I'm starting to see that audiences are also being open to having slower stories. That being said, I, I also saw that Free Rent got a lot of criticism from people who really like Shonen. You know, they were like, why is Free Rent so popular? So slow, it's so boring. So some people are, are not open to that yet, but there are people who are more accustomed to stories like Succession and those kinds that are open to like slower burn dramas. I want to create a webcomic with a very controversial themes and scenes. I was wondering how controversial a series can be. The most controversial part would be like the no Russian mission from Call of Duty, but even more controversial and is very important for the story. If you guys don't know what the no Russian uh, scene from Call of Duty is, I think it's a scene where basically these bad guys go into an airport and they do bad things to innocent people. And that's kind of crazy. There are manga and anime that have done this. They're all seinen. The one that's coming to mind right now is Inuyashiki, which is a series about two cyborgs. One of them is kind of like a psycho killer and he does pretty unspeakable things to, to a family. I do think controversial concepts are possible. I think you have to really think about why you're doing it. Is it for the shock value or is it for something that is really important for the story? I think if it's for the shock value the no russian scene from call of duty made sense because it's rate m for mature you could say it's like sanin also did it for the shock value but it was also important for the story sort of it's known as one of the best missions for call of duty so far but you know when you're going to a publisher with your first project and that is the first project you're going to go with most likely most publishers will not take that because it is a risk you're not hitting a general audience with that type of work you're going to be hitting a very niche audience and they're the publishers are going to be wondering you know whether or not that controversy is worth it especially when you target things like religion Religion. Good examples like Record of Ragnarok had a controversial depiction of an Indian god. I think it was Shiva, maybe. And now Record of Ragnarok is banned in India as a result of that. And as a result of that, you're also missing out on, on a multi-billion dollar market in India. And what publishers care about the most, partially the artistic expression that you're doing, but a lot of it is also, hey, is this project going to be successful? Is it going to make money? And if they think about your project that's a little bit controversial, is it going to be banned in countries? Are readers going to be upset by the content that you're putting into the project? Project. All of that publishers take into account. There's like sensitivity readers and that kind of stuff that are mainly around to make sure that your project is not offending people. There's right and wrong ways to implement shock value. If it's controversial just for the sake of being controversial, I would think about why you're doing it necessarily. And especially if it's your first project, it's probably not going to be the easiest sell. Question about webtoons versus manga. When you refer to webtoons, do you mean anything that is published digitally online or does webtoons refer to vertical scroll series? For example, if a non-Japanese series uses traditional manga pages with panels, but is published digitally online would it be considered webtoon or a manga so japan actually has a really large webtoon market i think it's even larger than the u.s i think it's like korea japan china u.s or something like that so i'd say japan has a pretty large webtoon market even shueisha is getting into webtoons shueisha being shown in jump manga is mostly black and white it's made for print optimized for print and the format is mostly horizontal so going right to left and therefore a lot of the composition of the panels is also optimized right to left horizontal now, when you think about webtoons, it's digital first. So a lot of the stuff that's printed, like soul leveling, is not optimized for print, which is why sometimes the pages don't look great. The webtoons are also colored. Sometimes they have a different style to them, you know, stylistically from our, our perspective, but mostly from a panel composition perspective, because it's vertical scroll and optimized for the phone, a lot of the composition of how the art and the panels actually look is vertical first. Front viewing shots instead of the manga might do a side view. There's a lot of front views, views from behind, three fourth front view shots, and rarely are things optimized for more of a horizontal experience for webtoons. And so I think those are the probably the key things. It's not necessarily something that's tied down to a particular country because Japan is doing a lot of webtoons also. Manga and webtoons both coming out of Japan. There's there's webtoons primarily coming out of Korea. And now the US, mostly webtoons are being done here. There's some beginning signs of a manga industry beginning to sprout in the US. It's not been very established yet. If the manga series is posted digitally online, I would still say it's digital. It's mostly the scrolling experience, right? The reading experience is, is how I would depict it. Webtoons are colored and vertical. Manga is black and white and horizontal. Do you work closely with an editor? Is working with an editor necessary if I want to start publishing my work seriously? I would say working with an editor has been very good for my development as a creative because it helps you understand what's popular in the space because they obviously have an eye on projects that have been successful and projects that have not been successful. And that kind of data and information is really important for considering what to do for your series. I and mean, you can look at stuff like successful on the market, but you don't have the kind of behind the scenes data 
that editors, especially experienced editors have. And so having a professional editor looking at your work, especially ones that are editing very successful series is quite useful. And so, yeah, we work with manga and webtoon editors from Japan, Korea, and the US from all sorts of backgrounds that have insights into what does well in international and local markets. You might think one thing is great and they might think another thing's great. So it, sometimes there is a clash there. Being respectful and being able to take feedback and being patient, particularly important when you're working with editors. Because sometimes you could think something is the best idea in the world and they could totally take a big old steamy poop on it and you have to accept that. That's one of the things of working with an editor because they're also the gatekeeper of whether or not your project goes through to publication. But again, the education of working with them is pretty is pretty priceless. I think a lot of creatives should work with editors before they decide to go on their own and do projects independently. Pretty arrogant to think that if you've never published anything before, that you would be better without any help from anyone else. I think I used to think that way, like, oh, I have such great ideas. A lot of those ideas, you'll get humbled pretty quickly by the market, I promise you. That is the end of this video. It's pretty long. Make sure to drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. Comment any questions that you guys happen to have. Guys, if you're interested in learning more about the manga webtoon industry, we'll leave behind the scenes on Patreon. We also have portfolio reviews there. Obviously, if you have questions, Patreon questions are prioritized on this video. Make sure to check that out. Link is in the description as well as all my projects. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe. Peace.